So we're all working now. We all want the extra money, so we all get our biometric screening. And you're sitting there, and they've gotten all the numbers, and you're sitting at the table where they, they uh, interpret all the numbers, and they're like, you're overweight. And then they start saying, this is all of the bad things that can happen to you because you're overweight. And they start saying, this is what you need to do, and this is what you need to change, and all the rest of that. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait up. That's half the story. In fact, that might only be a part of the story because the reality is because I'm overweight, I go to the gym four times a week regularly. I have a workout buddy. It's great. And, and the benefits of working out regularly actually outweigh the, the, the downside of being overweight. Now, just to be clear, I'm going to use myself as an example. There are actually two categories. There's overweight and there's obese. You can see I'm 5'11". Um, my healthy weight is 136 to 172. I'm considered overweight to 179 to 208. By the way, when I graduated basic training in the Air Force, I was already at 180. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, and then obese is 205 and up. The key thing is, when you go to these websites that say all of the bad things about being overweight, they lump overweight and obese in the same category, and they are not in the same category. I'm not here to tell you that being overweight doesn't have health risks. It does, but they're actually relatively minor. Once you get into the obese category, that's when things start getting a little bit ugly. Mm -hmm. And what I want to talk to you about today the benefits of aerobic exercise because if you're like me, you go to the gym because you are overweight. And so therefore, don't beat yourself up for being overweight. Understand you're getting a lot of benefit out of being overweight. The first one I want to talk about is helps you reduce and regulate your weight. Now, the key thing you need to understand about dieting in general is that most people, about 85%, depending upon which website you go to, most people that diet 85% end up putting that weight right back on. In fact, now not all of not all of the weight. It's not like you put all of the weight back on, but you end up putting a portion of that weight back on. And the reason because that is metabolism and muscle loss. The first thing you need to know about exercise is that exercise will help you keep your metabolism up. Not just while you're on the treadmill or the stair stepper or the elliptical or whatever, but it will keep your metabolism going for long after that. It just raises your metabolism. If all you're doing is dieting, you are actually slowing your metabolism down, which that means you're going into basically starvation mode. Your body's trying to preserve every single bit of calories it can, and it becomes harder and harder to lose weight. The second thing you need to understand about weight loss, if you're just dieting, you're losing muscle mass as well as fat. Yes, you're losing fat, but you're losing muscle mass. And as just like, just using an engine as an example. You can have two cars, one has a 2.5 liter engine, one has a 4 liter engine, the one with the 4 liter engine burns more gas than the one with the 2.5, the exact same thing with muscles. And here's the thing you understand, when people think of muscles, they think of some guy at the gym, and I'm gonna use you as an example, just sitting there <laughs> bench pressing as much as you possibly can. And, and, and don't get me wrong, that absolutely is muscle, but the muscle you need when you're thinking about weight loss is not in your upper body, it's your core and your legs, okay? Because when I'm walking to my next meeting, it doesn't matter how much I bench press for losing weight. It's all about the size of the muscles in my legs and the size of the muscles in my core. So whether I'm walking to my car, whether I'm walking to a meeting, whether I'm just walking to the bathroom, whatever I'm doing, I am building or burning a lot more calories and that, those muscles, you're burned by aerobic, act, aerobic activity. Yes, weightlifting is great. I'm actually a weightlifter. I'm not picking on weightlifters. Casual weightlifter, not nearly as big as him. But, <laughs> but the point being is, oh, oh you know, uh, <laughs> now, so I'm totally butchering it. But the point being is, it's, it's, weightlifting's fine, but if you don't want to weightlift, you're going to still build the muscle that you need through aerobic activity. The second thing I want to talk about is a booster mood. Now this is important because you don't continue to do something you don't want to do. Okay? And it takes a little bit to get to this point, but I just want to read some of these things that helps with it. First off, it helps with depression by increasing serotonin, which helps your brain regulate mood, sleep, and appetite. 
Okay? Serotonin is considered a feel-good drug. Um, if you're suffering with depression, you can get um, antidepressants that will actually go in there and help boost your serotonin level. Or you could just go to the gym. <laughs> Second thing is, I feel like one of these knife commercials, like, and that's not all. That is not all. The next thing you get is endorphins. Endorphins help um, you re relieve stress and it helps you regulate pain by binding to pain receptors. Some of the things that do the exact same thing as endorphins are oxycodone, hydrocodone, or morphine. So you don't have to have morphine, you could just totally go to the gym and get basically the same effect. I kid you not. It takes a little while to get to that point. You probably have to go for like two or three months or maybe a little bit longer, but eventually, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the gym after a really, really hard day of work where I'm stressed, but it's not like you're doing anything, you're just kind of sitting there, and I'm stressed, and I'm irritable, and I get to the gym, and I start on the elliptical, and within about, about 10 minutes, the stress is gone. By the time I get off, I'm a happy person again. <laughs> Relatively happy, as happy as I ever get. <laughs> and I already touched on this once already, it aids on sleep. Now, I do want to give a little bit of caveat on this, it will not help you sleep if you work out right before you sleep, okay? You do need to give about a two-hour window from when you stop working out and when you go to bed. But it will help you go to sleep faster, and it will help you sleep through the night. And if you're, if you're having issues with, like, just putting on weight is a good example. If you're not getting enough sleep, your body needs to make up for that. You'll eat more food. So getting a good night's sleep is absolutely critical to, to helping you lose weight. It's also really, really important for just being mentally alert and all the rest of that. And that is pretty much the end of my time. And this is why round is still a shape. And don't beat yourself up if you're a little bit overweight because it's probably encouraging you to go to the gym. And that's a good thing. Thank you very much. Person. Yeah. 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 I was all distracted, looking at the sources, we're probably have to get back up here. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. I was telling him earlier that today.